because I was such a huge Alice in Moye fan, and I thought her voice was incredible. Um, and, and people always gone about, uh, lots of re reviews were saying, oh, there's no way I can fill her shoes at all. So I always had this vision of Alice in Moye with huge feet, and like these shoes sort of like that, this big. And I thought, there's no way my feet are going to go in there. You know, they'll just, the shoes will just fall off. I just felt that having worked in the assembly, which is the situation before with, uh, or trying to get um, people working, different people working with me, you know, and the, and the problems that that, that brought about. I, I needed someone permanent to work with, you know, someone to uh, bounce ideas off. I remember having a bright orange and um, brown umbrella, which I think might have got me the audition. <laughs> but, um, I had to go along, they had two tracks, and these were probably disputes. They had two tracks, one was Who Needs Love Like That, which was our first single, and the other one was, uh, I think, was One Day, which, which was a single with, that Vince released with Paul Quinn. And uh, I remember going along, and on this singing Who Needs Love Like That, and the pitch was quite high for me, and we had to le learn it on uh, acoustic guitar, and uh, I pick up songs really quickly. And I remember that first day was, was I tried out falsetto for the first time. We started writing for the second album, and we were writing upstairs above Rough Trains. It was a mute studio, and uh, it was really fun. You know, Vince had kind of like come up with some new sounds and everything, and I thought they were really brilliant, these rhythm tracks. And we started writing, and, uh, and all of a sudden, this song came out, this sometimes song. As the song developed, um, as soon as we had this little break in the middle of the... We knew it was going to be a hit. We found the worst thing to do when writing a song is, um, is spend way too time twiddling knobs, because that's not really important. The important thing is, is the song and the melody the actual singing part of the song. I do think that anybody can make music. I think mean, there's a song in everybody. It's just that people don't necessarily know how to do it and uh, how to get their ideas down onto tape. That's what's nice about, that's what's nice about modern technology. You know, like the home recording situations and everything. Homemade records, I think mean, that's really a healthy thing. Chorus album, I'm really pleased with. There was a really good feeling to that when we did it. We had our usual arguments with the producer, you know. And, um, we recorded actually in, in Hamburg, you know. We went out a lot. He's a typical cancer. Um, and he'd always sit there and be expressionless and um, just be staring in space and not really looking at me. But I'd, I'd, I'll just be looking at him and kind of like trying to uh, um, invade him, you know, with my eyes. And I thought, right, you. And I thought, right, you, cancer. I'm going to um, crack you open. Even before this tour, tour started and before the wild tour started, we thought, you get to a point and you think, oh no, this is, this is really impossible. We've just like, we've, this is too much. We've taken too much on. But, but the, uh, the kick is always knowing that it's, that it's running, up and running, and, uh, and then it's like, once the show's going, it takes on its own life, and, and that's where the satisfaction comes from. Oh, when Andy started wearing funny clothes, you know, on the stage, then I, I was a bit dubious at first, I've got to say, but um, I think you've got to like either... Uh, you can't beat it, join it. And that's what been, been my attitude with the tour, you know. It's, um, it is funny to do, and I don't take it serious anymore. Well, which he's not. But um, uh, he's just a very open person. And I think it's a case of, uh, you know, people are going to accuse. The same with me. You know, if people think I'm an idiot or a clown or a fool, well, that's what I'm going to give them. So um, they can't, you know, you always have the last laugh, really. And uh, I think it's the same thing with Vince. It's like people think if people are going to go around and say he's gay and stuff, he's going to say, "Well, say what? You know, if that's what you believe, that's you, you can believe that. Uh, I'm comfortable with myself. I'm happy with myself. I know who I am." 
mean, I'm really pleased with what it's done. But at the same time, it's, it's, for me, it's not really a erasure. You know, it's, uh, just, it's something else. It's like a little side bit of, it's a side, it's a laugh. You know, we did it, we recorded it really quickly. And uh, we copied the arrangements pretty much as, as the originals. Um, I don't know, but there's not as much satisfaction. I don't think it's us, it's something else. If you're all alone, when the bridge... It's rare that you find someone you can live with. You know, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, you know. And uh, you know, we've stuck together, been together now for six years, you know. And it's, uh, it's, it's like really a one in a million find. Whether we are good at what we do, whether I think Andy's a brilliant singer, or whether we think someone's a brilliant sympathizer player, it's not the point, you know, the fact that we've found each other and we can work together and we get on, you know, is a rare thing.